Hi, my name is Methat El Masri. In today's video, we're going to look into .NET Aspire and we're going to be using Visual Studio Code. The initial database is going to be SQLite. We will later upgrade our application to use SQL Server and incorporate .NET Aspire. The source code is shown at the bottom of this slide. The starting code is on the first link and the ending code is on the second link. So with the start code, we just have a simple API Blazor application that uses SQLite. We're going to introduce Aspire into that solution and then we're going to migrate the solution so that it uses SQL Server and then understand how Aspire can orchestrate a SQL Server instance in a container and tie everything together so our application works seamlessly. In order to continue with this exercise, these are the prerequisites. You need to have .NET 8.0. You need also to have the .NET EF tool. If you do not have the .NET EF tool, you can easily install it by running this command from inside of a terminal window. In addition, you will need Visual Studio Code. You will need Docker Desktop because Aspire creates containers in Docker Desktop for the database. And we will also use Azure Data Studio just to look at the contents of our SQL Server database. So let's get started. Notice that I am using a Mac operating system and I am now in a working directory which I called Aspire. The first thing is we need to update our .NET workloads. So I'm going to type in .NET workload update and I get this error saying inadequate permissions. So because I am on a Mac, I need to add sudo in front of this command and enter my password and it should do what it's supposed to do at this point. The next thing I want to do is install the .NET Aspire workload. And I do that by typing .NET workload install Aspire. And this again needs the sudo privileges. So I'll tag on sudo here because I'm on a Mac. And finally, I can just have a look at all the workloads that I have by typing in .NET workload list. And I do have the Aspire workload installed, so I am good to go. I've got some source code that we're going to be using to get started. And you can clone the source code by running this command. Come down here and hit enter. I'm looking at my directory and I've got a folder here called Soccer FIFA. We're going to go to Soccer FIFA folder. Now, the reason I call it Soccer FIFA is because the database that I created for this application, it records all the World Cup soccer games since it all started. Let's look at what we've got in this directory. So we have three folders. We have Blazor FIFA, Library FIFA, and Web API FIFA. The library simply contains some model classes that are going to be used by both of these projects. The Web API is simply the backend that provides data for this Blazor frontend. So if we want to test this out, let's go first to the Web API folder and type in .NET watch. And this will start for us the backend. And here's this Swagger UI. If I click on the API games endpoint, I can try it out and execute it. And you'll see that there is some data. These are the games. Apparently the first World Cup game was held in Uruguay in 1930. Next, we can start the Blazor app. So I'm going to go into this Blazor folder in a terminal window and start the Blazor app with .NET Watch 2. Here's my Blazor app. I can click on all games and it will show me all the games. Let us introduce Aspire in 
this solution. So I'm going to stop both servers, this one, and I will stop the backend, which is this one. And let's go back to the parent directory. And to introduce .NET Aspire to our solution, all I need to do is type in this command, .NET new Aspire. I already installed the workload so it knows about Aspire. And you will see it didn't take long for it to add two projects to our solution. Initially, we had the Blazor project, we had the library project, and we had the web API project. Now, two other projects were added to our solution. The first one is the name of our solution dot app host, and the other one is the name of our solution dot service defaults. And also, we didn't have a solution file before. It added for us a solution file. Now, this solution file is only aware of these two new projects. It is not aware of the previous existing three projects being Blazor, the library, and the Web API. So we need to add those. We're going to execute the following commands. The first command shown here will add our Blazor project to our solution file. The second will add our Web API project again to the same solution file. And the third will add our library project to the solution file. So I will copy all of these three and paste them here and run them. So at this point, we have all our projects in the solution file. The next thing we need to do is add references from the Blazor project and the Web API project into the app host project. And these are the two commands to do that. This will add a reference from the Blazor project into the app host project. And the second one will add a reference to the web API project into the app host project. So let's take these and execute them here. What we just did was to add references from these projects, the web API and the Blazor into the app host project. We also need to add references from this project into the Blazor and Web API projects. To do that, you would execute these two commands down here. We have now updated our solution file and added all the references that we need. Let's have a look at what we've done by opening our solution in VS Code. So I've got VS Code here. An important extension that you need is the C Sharp Dev Kit. This C Sharp Dev Kit is very useful and I recommend that you install it. So if we look back at what we've got, if we go down to Solution Explorer, you can see that our solution file is now aware of all our projects. There is still some plumbing that we need to do inside of the various projects so that they are aware of their role inside of this Aspire orchestration. Inside the Blazor FIFA project and the Web API FIFA project, we need to put some code in the programs.cs file. And the code that we're going to put is right before this statement here. So that would be builder dot add service default and we can copy this as is and put it also in the web api project program dot cs file in the same place one more thing we should do is to go into the app host project which is this one here and go into the program dot cs we will add the following code right before the last statement on line five, and that code would be this. To the app host project, we're saying that we're going to add a project, which is our API project, and we will call that backend. This returns an object called API. An API really represents the fact that we have an API project that we want to work with. And also here we add another project, which is the Blazor project. We call that front end. 
but notice this. We're saying that the front-end project, it needs a reference to the API project because the Blazor project is a front-end project and it requires access to the API project. One more thing we need to do is go to the Blazor project and in the Blazor project, there is a class here called constants. And in this constants class, we have the base URL that points to the backend. We called the backend by the name of backend, which means that in this file, instead of pointing to localhost and a port number, we can simply replace this with backend. Now we can try our application. So back in our terminal window, let's go to the app host project. So we'll search for the app host project and it would be soccerfifa.apphost. And here we can type in .net watch. So this becomes the entry point for our Aspire orchestration. This UI automatically opens up in a browser and we have two projects here. We've got the backend, which is the API, and we have the frontend. We can click on this endpoint here just to view our backend. So if you click on this, you will get your Swagger UI. Let's click on get here, try it out, and sure enough, it works. Let's close that and try the front end. And the front end is a Blazor app. So let me click on this, click on all games, and sure enough, we get the data we're looking for. In addition, there are other things you can look at. For example, you can view the logs, you can view any more details here, and you get details about environment variables and other things like that. And you can also look around all these other options here. For example, you can look at the console of the backend application. You can look at the console of the frontend application. You can look at the structure tab, the traces tab, and the metrics tab. So at this point, we know that our Aspire is working. It's able to orchestrate our solution such that you just have one entry point. You don't need to run the back end first and then run the front end first and all that. Let's take on a challenge. Instead of SQLite, let us convert this application so that it uses SQL Server. Close this browser and I will close this server here. We need to add this package into our web API project because it is the only project that needs to communicate with our database. And this is a SQL Server package pertaining to Aspire. So I'm going to copy this and go into my web API project. Let's go back to the parent folder. And in here, I'm going to go to the web API project and add this package. The next thing I want to do is replace some code in the program.cs of the web API project. And that is this here. We will not be communicating with SQLite and we're going to get our environment variable from Aspire. So instead of this code, which I will comment here, I'm going to add something else. The code I'm going to add goes right before builder add service defaults, which we added earlier on. And it basically adds to the builder, the SQL server context using this particular application DB context class and SQL data is pretty much like the connection string name, which we will set up in a moment. Now, also in the same program.cs file in the web API project, we're going to add some code right before app run almost in the bottom of this file. The code we're going to add is this. If we're in development environment, we want to get hold of an instance of the application DB context. And then we want to execute this command to ensure that the database gets created. Else, this middleware adds HTTP strict transport security headers to the responses. HSTS is a web security policy mechanism 
that helps to protect websites against man-in-the-middle attacks by ensuring that browsers only interact with the server over HTTPS. So let's take this code and put it right before app run in this program.cs that belongs to the web API project. Let's remove all references to SQLite in our web API project. We have these files that pertain to SQLite. So I'm going to delete all three of them. Next, there are database migrations that are being applied to this project. And these migrations, they are SQLite centric. So let's come here and delete this migrations folder, which is under the data folder. We will go into the project file that pertains to the web API. And let's search for a package that has to do with SQLite. And it is this package. We can delete that because we're not using SQLite. Finally, also in the same web API project in our app settings, we have a connection stream called default connections that points to a SQLite database file called college.db. We will delete that because our connection string is going to come now from the app host Aspire project. So let's close this. Now let us create new migrations for SQL Server. So we will execute this command .NET EF migrations. Our migration is going to be called M1 and it's going to go into the data migrations folder. And I'll take this and execute it in the Web API project. At this point, we should find under the data folder a migrations folder which has our database migrations. We next turn our attention to the app host project. We need to add a package pertaining to hosting SQL Server in this project. And this is the package we need to add. So I will copy this and go into the soccer app host project and add this package. Next, we go into the app host project again, open up program.cs, and we need to add some code that tells the app host that we're using SQL Server. Right up here, let's tell it that we want to use SQL Server. So we're going to create a new variable and call it SQL, and it's equal to builder.addSQL Server. And we want to give our SQL Server a name. We can just call it SQL, and we will add a database to this. So we can say add database, and the name we're going to give it is SQL data. Now the SQL data has to match the name that we gave in the web API program.cs file. If you remember up here, we said that our connection string is SQL data. That has to match with this name that we're going to give it here. Now we have to also tell the web API project that it is using this SQL object. So we do that by saying dot with reference and we reference this name SQL is the same name we put up here. We can now test our application to make sure that it's working. But before we do that, make sure that your Docker is running because Aspire is going to start SQL Server in a container. Once you make sure that your Docker is running, you can go into the app host folder and just type in .NET watch. And it should open the Aspire UI in your default browser. And here it is. You can see that we have a container called SQL. We have our backend project that is using SQL Server. You have our frontend project that is a Blazor project. And you have at the bottom here your database. Your database is called SQL Data. Let's test out our backend. So if you click on this, you should see you have your data and this data actually is in the SQL Server database. Let's check our Blazor app. So we can close this and go to our Blazor app 
and click on all games and that works perfectly well and you can see here that our base URL in Blazor is http colon slash slash just backend and this works. One other thing that is very interesting is if you go to your backend project and you click on details you can actually look for the the connection string and the connection string is this one here it would be connection string sql data now if you want to have a look at this you can open up and view the details and you will see here that the user is sa and this here is the password and this password is randomly generated let's check the database using Azure Data Studio. So here's my Azure Data Studio. I'm going to create a new connection. This, which is localhost running on port 63260. Enter that here. And we're going to use SQL login. The username is SA. And the password, we'll copy this password and put it down here. And I'm going to enable this checkbox remember password and let's connect. We get this connection error and it wants us to click on enable trust server certificate and there you go. We have a connection to the database. You can also make sure that your container is running with SQL Server because if you go to your Docker desktop, there's indeed a SQL Server container that's running. So now that we've connected to our database, let's look at what's in this SQL data database. Expand DBO, look at the tables. There's only one table here. I can see the contents of that table. There it is. We have our games in this table. I thank you for coming this far in this video. And if you found it good, please give it the thumbs up. And you can also subscribe to my channel. I'm hoping to add more videos on Aspire. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.